situation no win. Gotta join in a new ball of yarn. It's always a pain. Do I use a knot or weave my end? Situation no win. So if you watch my recent video on spicy takes, you will know that I never think the answer. Well, I almost never think the answer. I rarely, it's exceedingly rare that I'd be like, yeah, use a knot. The fact is there's lots of ways that you can join in a ball of yarn without using a knot and, 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 avoid weaving in tails. Now I've done a couple of videos that show different ways that this can be accomplished, but I have another one for you today. So if you wanna learn another way to join in a ball of yarn, no weaving in ends, no knots involved, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, give this video a thumbs up, and learn about the clasp join. So for this clasp join, I'm gonna show you two approaches to it. One involves when you have to do a joining a new ball of yarn that is the same color. And then I'm gonna show you how you can use the clasp join to join in a new ball of yarn that is a different color and have it hit just the spot that you want so that you have this really clean color change. As always, down in the description box, you will find timestamps to different parts of the video. So if there's something specific you wanna to get to or you wanna like rewatch the technique again, you can find those timestamps down below. Also down in the description box, you will find a list of materials and resources I think that are helpful from today's video or relevant. Some of these will have clearly marked affiliate links. If you click on one of those links to do some shopping, I might earn a small commission and this helps support my channel and helps me keep doing what I'm doing here on the YouTubes. So if you utilize one of my affiliate links or you leave me a tip through buy me a coffee or a super thanks, thank you so much. It is so greatly appreciated. And if you're like, Carrie, I can't right now, I totally understand. I'm really just glad you're here watching this video today. And with all those out of the way, let's get into the clasp joint. So, guess what it's time for? Dun, 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 dun. Swatch time! Yeah! So, we have the swatch here, and I have about six inches of tail left, so it's definitely time for me to join in a new ball of yarn. I'm gonna take my tail, and I'm going to bring it over and create this little bit of a loop. Uh, if you look back here, I still have about an inch of tail left that's going to stay to the back of the work. Uh, after I'm done knitting and I'm finishing, I'll just trim that little extra bit of tail. So I won't have to weave anything in. Now I want to just take my two yarns here, doubled over, and I'm going to knit a stitch or two. There we go. So now my loop is nice and secure. What I'm gonna do now is I'm bringing my new ball of yarn. I'm gonna take this tail and I'm gonna bring it through that loop thusly and I'm going to double it over. So now you can see why this is called the clasp join, right? Because the tail here of the old ball and the tail of the new ball are clasped together. And it kind of creates one single length of yarn. And now I just knit. All right, so here I just knitted in to my clasp. I passed the clasp right there is knit in and it's to the back of the work. That's great, that's exactly what you want. Now I'm going to work that doubled up new ball of yarn together for a few stitches until I'm sure that tail is secure. Once I'm sure that's secure, I just drop that tail and knit with one strand of yarn. You can see like how easy that join is to do. So there, I am now joined in my new ball of yarn. There is something very important to be aware of, however. You probably have picked up in watching this that really what the clasp join is doing is doubling up yarn. And if you look 
here, you're gonna see coming out of the stitches are gonna be two strands of yarn because I doubled up my yarn in when I knitted those stitches. So when I come back to knit the next row, I have to make sure that I knit through both strands of yarn. And there, my join is complete. When I'm done finishing um, my knitting and probably after I washed or blocked or what have you, then I'll trim these tails and I will be good to go without join. I made a couple more rounds because I want you to see what it looks like in the fabric where that joint is because you do have doubled up yarn so you can definitely feel the extra little bit of thickness but do you see it? Um, so right here is where I did that join and I think especially after this was like blocked you wouldn't notice it at all but it's hard to see. Now is that going to be true for every yarn? Not necessarily. Especially cotton yarns or plant-based yarns where the yarn has really strong stitch definition, that little bit of doubled up yarn in those spots might be more apparent. And if it is and you don't like it, well, there are other jointed methods. One of my favorites uh, is the braided join. I will link it up here and down in the description box. One of the really nice things with the braided join is that you can really kind of control the thickness of the yarn being joined together. So it's really like nice and seamless, but you know, uh, it is fiddly. And the one, I think one really nice thing about this clasp join is it is not fiddly. But I really encourage you actually to learn multiple ways to join in yarns so that you have the best tool that you need for any given situation. Next, I'm gonna show you how you can use this technique to do a color change in the exact spot that you want it to be in your knitting. All right, so I think where the clasp join really shines is when it comes to changing colors. Because like stripes, a lot of times you have to cut your yarn quite a few times. Um, you can join in your yarn at the specific place where the ball change happens. In fact, on this swatch, you can see right here, you know, I changed color. I did this garter stitch in white and then I did the stockinette in red. But if I turn to the back, you'll see I've already have everything taken care of. I already snipped my tail and I have a really beautiful yarn change there. Let's pretend that this swatch is actually in the round and this is the beginning of my next round and I want to change my colors. So what I'm gonna do is I want to tink back and know how much yarn I needed in order to get back to this spot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my stitch marker here and I'm going to pierce my yarn right where it's at the needle so that I can mark that last stitch. And I'm gonna tink back five or six stitches. So that's one, two, three, four, five. That should be plenty. All right, so right here, this is how much yarn I need to get back to where I was, to knit those five stitches back. So I'm gonna take my yarn and I'm gonna double it over. So see my marker is here at the end. My marker is at the end of that loop, which is where I want my last stitch to end up. And now I'm going to knit a couple of stitches just to lock in that loop. Okay, there, locked in my, my stitches. Now at this point, I can remove this marker, but I'm gonna leave it there just so you can see how well this worked. Now I'm digging my new ball of yarn and I'm gonna put it into that loop and then double it back. All right, that should be plenty. I don't need to double it back all that far, you know. I only need to double back like five, six inches. And now I can just knit. And boom, look. One, two, three, four, five. That is exactly the number of stitches that I tinked back. And I ended up with my yarn right where I wanted it.
So that's how you can do it. It's really about measuring out the amount of tail that you need to get to the specific knot where you want that change to happen between the old yarn and the new yarn. I, this to me is what I'm most excited about in terms of using this cloth joint into the future is with stripes because uh, personally myself, unless it's only a couple of rows, if I'm doing color changes for stripes every three, four, five rows, I do not want to carry yarn up the side for that many rows. It just doesn't tend to work out well. So, you know, my instinct is to go ahead, cut, and join in the new color. With this, I can join in the new color in such a way that it's just really nice and seamless and avoids having to weave in a lot of ends. And I can definitely see myself using this clasp join method if I'm doing color changes like this. So that is the clasp join. And I have to say, I'm very excited about this join. Um, I think there's a lot of advantages to it. A big one is that it will work with almost any yarn as far as I can tell right now. Um, you know, a lot of join-in techniques are limited either by fiber, like the felted join, the Russian join, um, really rely on having 100% non-superwash wool to work. And um, the Russian join and the braided join, you really need to have a plied yarn to make those work. And even the braided join, which I love, sometimes isn't an option because the spin of the yarn is just like, I had a yarn, this project actually in particular, now that I, this all is coming back to me now, this project I tried to do ball changes utilizing a braided join and it didn't work because this yarn is a 100% cotton yarn and when I tried to unply the yarns to do a braided join, the, the yarn just wouldn't hold together. The plies wouldn't hold together. It would just kind of disintegrate as fluff in my hand. This clasp join definitely would have been a contender for me for this project had I known about it at the time. I, I would absolutely also use this um, in Tunisian crochet. I love Tunisian crochet and, you know, joining in balls of yarn, whether it's knitting or crochet, a lot of times you can use these techniques in both crafts. And I absolutely think the clasp join would be great if I was joining in a new ball of yarn during Tunisian crochet, during the return pass in particular. But the one downside to this join is you are basically, at the end of the day, doubling up your tails. Um, and so you do get a little bit of extra thickness in those spots where you joined in your yarn. For something like wool or acrylic, generally it's not gonna be an issue. It won't even be noticeable. Um, I have done a couple of joins in here, and if you just look at the public side of the work, you don't notice that little bit of thickness at all. It's not really until you turn the work over that you can really see the extra thickness. But, you know, every project is unique, every yarn and fiber combination is unique, and you have to consider whether that doubled up yarn is going to be an issue for a particular project or not. Which is why at the end of the day, the clasp weft is great, there's a lot of benefits to it, but it is just one more tool in your toolbox. Which is why I have now a playlist of videos about different join methods. I will link it up here and down in the description below if you are interested in learning more ways to join in a new ball of yarn into your project. So there is the class join. I would love to hear from you. Any questions you have about this? If you have used the class join, I'd love to know what your experience is about it and any tips or tricks that you might have um, about joining in new balls of yarn. What is your favorite technique to use? Um, <laughs> I'd love to hear about it down in the comments below. That is it for me today. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I hope that you have found this helpful and entertaining. If so, please make sure to give my video a thumbs up and share with the liking videos, sharing videos, commenting on videos are all amazing ways that help support my channel and let YouTube know that I'm a space for checking out and just share me with other people and we can keep growing this community together. Uh, if you have not already, if you're new to my channel, or if you've watched a couple of 
videos and I'm popping up in your feed more, please make sure that you hit subscribe and the notification bell. Clicking on the notification bell, depending on your settings, will let you know whenever I upload a new video or start a live stream. That is it for me today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you have a wonderful day, evening, weekend, weeknight, whenever you may be watching this. And as always, happy health and happy making. Bye. I think I nailed that. Felt good. Felt real good. Situation away. Rush from the change in atmosphere. I don't really know the words, but I got this song in my head. <sighs> oh, I'm sore. I'm sore. I did a string class yesterday, trying to get back into working out regularly after having COVID, and oh. My legs are sore. Like I finished my class yesterday and my legs were like jello. <laughs> jello. The fact is, there's lots of ways to join in balls of yarn. Oops, excuse me, burp. I'm feeling good. I enjoy making this video today. By the way, if there's any videos you'd like from me, if you're like, Carrie, I've heard about this or that, how do you do it? Or can you tell me more about this or that? Let me know down in the comments below. Cause like I'm always looking for, you know, what it is that you are looking for from me. Cause you know, anyway, ah, I'm gonna have some lunch.